When an architecture gets a protection mechanism, such as Intel's privilege separation rings, this means that now you've got some situation where you want the kernel or the executive code to fully control certain resources and you want to restrict their access from the lower privileged code like user space. So we've seen thus far a couple of different ways to transition between low privilege and high privilege code, the call gates and the interrupts, but those are not currently the preferred methods on x86. System calls are. And specifically, newer instruction sets have added the syscall and sysenter instructions. And these are currently the most preferred way to transition from ring three to ring zero. So just to back up and you know talk about sort of the evolution of computing systems and operating systems, if you think like way back to an operating system like DOS, where the OS and the applications are all sort of mixed in one memory space and there's no true separation between them, you would have the hardware and you would have the software. And some particular application may call through the OS in order to call some particular function of the hardware to, you know, for instance, read a sector off of a spinning disk hard drive. But the problem with these older operating systems is that the application could just go around the operating system if it knew how. So there were particular interfaces and apps could just go directly to the hardware. So once ring zero, ring three type separation comes into play, you've got the hardware, which is hard, you've got the software, which is softer, and you've got now user space, which is fluid. So I don't know, I just came up with these, uh, with these colorations a long time ago, just didn't want plain white boxes. So got me some slack here. So ring zero is taking control of the system and it wants to restrict things from user space. So the first and most important thing it does is it takes control of the hardware and says, dear user space, you're not allowed to just talk to the hardware, you have to go through me. Because that's how you can enforce things like privileges on files, privileges for executing things, capability to read and write to IO devices like keyboards or monitors. So if user space wants to open a file to execute some code or something like that, then it has to call through the kernel and the kernel will be the one responsible for opening that file. And the hardware may send the data back to the kernel, but then the kernel can abstract that data in some way if it wants to provide a more meaningful interface between the kernel and user space. Something that it can actually guarantee in terms of a, a stable API between kernel land and user space. So that stable API is typically called the system call interface. And what it is, is a set of functions that the kernel would expose to user space. So system function one, system function two, three, and four. So the kernel, the operating system, decides what the functionality is that it needs to provide to user space. And it you know, makes those available somehow so that user space can call into the kernel. Kernel does the work for user space and then it transfers back. But a slightly more realistic version of that system call interface is not things going one-to-one -one direct. It's usually that there's going to be some sort of centralized dispatching mechanism, some sort of centralized dispatching library down in user space that all the various uh, system calls call into. From that central code, then it goes up to a central location in the kernel space. And from there, it dispatches to the particular function of interest. And so to make that slightly more accurate, instead of being random system calls, it could be things like this from Windows. Read key has a NT read key up in the kernel space. Write file, NT write file. Shutdown system and open semaphore. These are just functions, functionality that the kernel wants to provide to user space that it knows most programs are going to need, and so it provides it. So then the question is, what are our options to bridge this chasm between the user space and kernel space? Well, we saw the first one, call gates, but that was really used circa Windows 95 or so. The next one are interrupts, and because this is just, because interrupts below 31 are reserved for Intel, and above it are, you know, any operating system can do whatever it wants with it. Different operating systems can choose different interrupts. It's really just up to them. And so historically, Windows had used interrupt 2E and Unix type systems had used interrupt 80. 
and it was really just you know up to the you know operating system they make the code down here for user space they make the code for up here in kernel space and so they just have to agree with themselves about what this interrupt is that gets them from user space to kernel space interrupt 2e was used for a long time on windows and then it was removed and then it was recently added back in again for reasons doing to do with uh, virtualization and so finally the last mechanism is the system call fun uh, assembly instructions so from about intel pentium 2s or so there was a sys enter assembly instruction which would transition from user space to kernel space and a sys exit which would return you back to user space and so about Windows XP, Linux 2.5 or so, those are where these were adopted for 32-bit systems. For 64-bit systems, we said that AMD, you know, extended the architecture. And so it added separate competing syscall and sysret. Instead of just extending these to 64-bit, they came up with their own that have similar but slightly different semantics. And those were used from around Windows 8 to, you know, Linux, I don't know, because uh, because the interface itself is called syscall, it's uh, somewhat difficult to Google for you know, when did Linux use syscall assembly instruction. So if someone wants to go dig through the Linux commit logs and find that out for me, please go ahead and let me know. So an interesting data point that I found randomly as I was Googling around for things is that performance-wise, an interrupt gate is the most compatible thing, but it's also the slowest thing. So, you know, order of magnitude 600 cycles for some particular hardware. Call gate is not as bad, but still pretty bad in comparison to the syscall and sysenter instructions. So that's again why wherever possible, wherever the hardware supports it, and wherever the you know, operating system mode of 32 or 64-bit supports it, operating systems will generally try to use these syscall or sysenter.